what's going on guys so i was running through um taking a look at some articles um doing some research and stuff for some of these future videos and uh we might have pulled uh, probably one of the greatest loopholes um, in the NFL for this season, at least when it comes to uh, player development. So the big news for us has been that uh, we know we had John Beck, which is Zach Wilson's and, you know, a multitude of other quarterbacks around the league, um, especially up and coming players that are coming into uh, the NFL for the first time, um, personal uh, quarterback coach. So we brought him in. I don't even remember what the time frame was. I want to say maybe like week f six, something like that. Either way, though, he was there for at least the majority, uh, at least half to the majority of the season. Um, what ended up happening was he's been able to be in player meetings. Um, he's been able to see the practices themselves with how he's running. Um, he can kind of see the personnel and stuff that was there as well. So he, he pretty much knows the whole uh ins and outs of what was going on and then of course he was there on game day so aside from all of the voices and uh you know developmental coaches that zach wilson would have had around him between lafleur john beck um there's another name that i'm missing I, it'll probably come back to me but either way he had at least three or four voices that was there not including robert sala of course um so John Beck, he's no longer essentially part of the New York Jets coaching staff. What this means is, is that when Zach Wilson decides to go ahead and, you know, maybe that's a month or whatever from now, when he decides to get back into his offseason conditioning and training, going over things for the next season, John Beck has no restrictions in working with him. So from the standpoint of him collecting all that information, data, being able to review game film and everything, he literally knows just as well, if not better, what Zach Wilson has gone through than anybody else that he could work with. So from the consistency standpoint, pretty much the stars and moons have aligned uh, for Wilson and the Jets here. Um, he's going back into the same offensive system with the same coaching staff, and uh, we're going to have to imagine better players around him ultimately. So that in itself is a coup. But not only that, you get to go back in the offseason and work with your quarterback coaching. You don't have to waste time or uh, potentially struggle relaying information about what they were trying to do scheme wise versus what your skill set at the time may have been or what you need to work on. He literally already knows it. So. I would imagine right now John Beck is, you know, he can't work with the coaching staff, but he's crafting something specifically around what he's seen those struggles to be. Um, and this is really exciting because we just previously talked about Makai Becton uh, and him getting assistance on his end so he can provide uh, his best foot forward for the upcoming season. Now it's Zach Wilson's turn. So I think with Zach Wilson, everybody obviously pointed to the no interceptions over the last five games. Um, now everything else in between was kind of a little bit worrisome still, if you want to nitpick over things, uh, the passing yard outputs weren't great. I believe we finished with like, I want to say it was like, uh, 58 yards overall, considering, you know, sacks and stuff like that, that came into play for the last game. Granted receiving core and all that stuff was trash, but still it's not like he was out there having multiple touchdown games and things like that. Um, we've seen him utilize his legs a little bit more for the lack of um, talent that was at the wide receiver position at the Helms for him. Um, so it, it's going to be a lot of those fundamental mechanics um, that we end up seeing him nail out. I think a lot of it is going to be kind of some of his dropbacks. Um, I know potentially when it came to play action as well as just some of his dropbacks in general, sometimes he might have got a glimpse of somebody that busted through really quick and he would turn their back to them which isn't necessarily a bad thing in and of itself, but it really takes a lot of savvy to pull that off. And I just don't think he had the experience at the time. So there were a lot of moments where we seen him kind of dancing around and, you know, maybe a quarter of the time that played out to his advantage. We had the long touchdown run. Um, we had a couple of the passes that he was able to flick to the left and he might have found a Berrios. Um, he found Mims early on in the season. We had the obvious, uh, you know, um, school ground uh pass that he did to Corey Davis so some of those worked out brilliant looks great on film uh but for each one of those plays there were at least three or four other ones where you know 
he's running out of bounds essentially when he could have threw the ball away he gets sacked we lose 18 yards something crazy like that so uh or you know a fumble in the worst case scenario so there's a lot of things like that that will definitely end up being cleaned up but ultimately i'm still excited um it's definitely still been a lot of reports as well that he plans on getting back to it pretty early going through some strength uh and uh conditioning of course to you know beef up the body a little bit to take on uh an 18 week season and hopefully the playoffs um aside from that though still super super great idea i don't know if this was pre-planned or not um in regards to why they brought in john beck because i know there was a lot of questions about it initially um uh, but ultimately, it, I mean, if it wasn't pre-planned, then still, it's just a, a great um, exception to the rule that we were able to pull off. If it was pre-planned, the job Robert Sala and them has done just had to get, you know, there's a grading scale for it that we're working with. And we say we give them, you know, a B minus or something. It definitely has to at least tick up uh, to a B plus or an A minus just based off of this. So it's going to be nice to see what that progression looks like. I do think we are going to see a massive uptick. Um, I kind of talked about it in a couple of chat forums and things like that with some other people, just kind of getting ideas and bouncing off, uh, you know, if my thoughts on the off season were going to be crazy, but I see there being kind of a 70, 30 split for the off season. So, uh, 70% of free agents are probably going to be on the defensive side, 30 on the offensive. Uh, I think that impact though on the offensive players will be there. Um, uh, with that said, though, I think that leaves us being able to kind of essentially go best player available for however we think we can best create the synergy on the team. Um, whether that be rebuilding the linebacker core and bringing, uh, all fresh new talent, um, that's not having to worry about converting and things like that there, or if that's still continuing to try to build up as much as possible around Zach Wilson and subsidizing, um, essentially what we did last draft where we picked, uh, physically talented players more so than maybe having the skill set for that position um and trying to see if we can alter that but very exciting news let me know what you guys think about uh w zach wilson's offseason training um and kind of what you think about the coaching staff moving forward um other than that though it's a pleasure as always thank you guys for all the support i'll catch up with you again